Welcome to homecampus.com.sg. In this lesson, we will see how to simplify fractions and what the greatest common factor is. So first of all, let's see what simplifying fractions is and why we should simplify fractions. Okay, so let me start with my usual pizza. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take three pizzas. Okay, so here's my first pizza and I'm going to copy it a couple of times to make three pizzas. This is my second pizza and this is my third one. So what I do with my first pizza is I cut it up into eight slices. Okay, so I cut the first pizza into eight slices and then what I do is I give four upon eight or four eighth of the pizza to Annie. So Annie gets four eighth of this pizza, which means she gets four out of the eight slices, right? And then what I do with the second pizza is I cut it up into four slices, okay? So I cut it up into four slices and then what I do is I give two fourth or two slices out of the four slices to Betty. So Betty gets two out of the four slices of the second pizza. And then what I do is I take the third pizza and I cut up the third pizza into two slices and I give one of the two slices to Charlie. So Charlie gets one out of the two slices of the third pizza. But now, if you look carefully, do you see a relation between among the three pizzas, among Annie's share, Betty's share, and Charlie's share? Do you see a relation in the three yellow shaded parts? Well, what I see quite obviously is that this yellow part here in the first pizza is the same as this yellow part in the second pizza, that's Betty's, which is the same as the third yellow part here in Charlie's Pizza. So what I see quite obviously is that 4 upon 8, which is Annie's fraction of the first pizza, is equal to 2 upon 4, which is Betty's share or Betty's fraction of the second pizza, is the same as 1 upon 2, which is the share that belongs to Charlie of the third pizza. So what I see quite obviously is 4 upon 8 is equal to 2 upon 4, which is equal to 1 upon 2. But if you can't see that yet, what I'll do for you is I'll erase these lines here. Okay, so let me erase these lines here, that slice of the pizza. So it's quite obvious to you that, yeah, these shares are really equal. These yellow shaded parts or these yellow colored parts are really equal. So what I do is I erase these. Now, is this uh, obvious to you that these uh, the shaded parts are really equal? Well, I suppose so. So then, yeah, there you go. 4 upon 8 or 4 eighth is really equal to 2 fourths, which is equal to 1 upon 2 or 1 half or half. And that's why these fractions, which are really equal to each other, are called equivalent fractions. They're called equivalent fractions. So although they look different, they look different, the value is really equal to each other. It's the same as each other. So they're called equivalent fractions. But why should you call it 4 8 if it's really equal to 1 upon 2? So if 4 8 is really equal to half or 1 upon 2 or 1 half, whatever you call it, then why should you call it 4 8? Why not just half? Well, the answer to that is you should really call it only half and not 4, four 8 or 2 fourth because it's really only equal to half. And why we should simplify fractions is because simplified fractions are much easier for your brain to comprehend or process, which means that it's much easier for people to understand. It's much easier to understand a simplified fraction like uh, 3 upon 5 rather than a complicated fraction like, uh, say, 51 upon 85. So although 51 upon 85 is the same as 3 fifths, it's much easier if uh, somebody tells you 3 fifths of something rather than, you know, 51 out of 85, 51 upon 85. So that's why you should really simplify fractions. And that's why we're going to learn how to simplify fractions. So here is uh, how to simplify fractions. So let's take a fraction like 4 upon 8. But how do I know that it's really equal to 1 upon 2? Or how do I simplify it to 1 upon 2? So what I do is I take 4 upon 8 and I divide it by 4. So if I divide the numerator by 4, I must also divide the denominator by 4. So what I do is I divide both the numerator and the denominator by 4. So if I divide 4, this 4 over here, if I divide this 4 over here by 4, what I get is 1. And if I divide this 8 by 4, what I get is 2. So there you go. Your 4 upon 8 
get simplified to 1 upon 2. Similarly, if I take 2 upon 4, so what I do is I take 2 upon 4, and to simplify it, what I do is I divide the numerator and the denominator both by 2. So I divide both of these by 2, and what I get is 2 when divided by 2 gives you 1, and 4 when divided by 2 gives you 2. So your 2 upon 4 gets simplified to 1 upon 2. Similarly, what I did with 51 upon 85 was what I did was I actually divided 51 and 85, both of them by 17. So if I divide 51 and 85 both by 17, what I get is the simplified version of 51 upon 85, which is 3 upon 5. But, but, how do you know which number to divide it by? How do you know you must divide it by 17 or 4 or 2? So to find out whether you should divide it by 17 or 2 or 4 or 5 or 20 or 30 or 80 or whatever number, what you must find out is the greatest common factor, otherwise also known as GCF. Some people or some books also call uh, greatest common factors HCF, which is highest common factor. It's one and the same. So next, what we're going to learn is how to find out the greatest common factor of two numbers, two or more numbers. So let's do that. Let's uh, get rid of this and uh, find out what GCF is. Okay. So greatest common factor, let me write that down. Greatest common factor or GCF. Okay. Now greatest common factor, as the name says, it is the greatest of the common factors. Okay, so let's find out, for example, the greatest common factor of 4 and 8. So for that, what we do first is find out the factors of 4 and 8. Okay, so we start backwards. We first find out the factors. Now, what are the factors of 4? The factors of 4 are 4 and 1 because 4 times 1 gives you 4. So those are the factors of 4. Then also 2 times 2 gives you 4. So 2 and 2 are the factors of 4. But the 2 is repetitive. So what we're going to do is strike it out and we'll say that the factors of 4 are 4, 1, and 2. Now let's find out the factors of 8. So the factors of 8 are 8 and 1 because 8 times 1 gives you 8. Then 4 times 2 because 4 times 2 gives you 8. Then you could also say that 2 times 2 times 2 uh, gives you 8. So that's also a factor. Okay. But we have 1, 2 already here. So what we're going to do is strike out these two. So now let's write down the factors of 8. So the factors of 8 are 8, 1, 4, and 2. Now let's move on to the next part. The next part says common factor. So what are the common factors? Let's find out the common factors of 4 and 8. Well, from here we can say that the common factors of 4 and 8 are 4 because 4 is present in here and also in here. Then 1 is also present in here and in here. And also 2, which is present in here and in here. So the common factors of 4 and 8 are 4, 1, and 2. Now let's move on to the last part, which says greatest common factor. So let's find out what the greatest common factor is. So for that, what we find out is the greatest of the common factors. Now we have three common factors. We have 4, 1, and 2. But which one of them is the greatest? Quite obviously, it's 4. 4 in here and 4 in here. That's the common, that's the greatest common factor. So there you go. There's your answer. The greatest common factor or GCF of 4 and 8 is equal to 4. Now, how is GCF helpful? Well, GCF is helpful because if you have a fraction like 4 and 8, okay, I'm using these two numbers again, 4 and 8, of which we just found the greatest common factor. So we take 4 upon 8, say this is your fraction, and you want to simplify it. So then what you do is you simply divide it by the greatest common factor of 4 and 8, which is 4 in this case. So what you do is you divide 4 upon 8 by 4, the numerator as well as the denominator, and what you get is, let's see, 4 divided by 4 gives you 1, and 8 divided by 4 gives you 2. So there you go you get 1 upon 2 as the simplified form of 4 upon 8. So there is the simplification of the fraction 4 upon 8 using GCF. But there's another way to find out GCF. You could either write down all the factors, which can be confusing sometimes, or you could miss out on some of the factors. So what you can also do, the other method, is that you take the two numbers, 4 and 8, 
and I divide these two numbers by a common number okay I take a number which can divide both 4 and 8 so I take for example 2 now 2 can divide both 4 and 8 2 can divide 4 2 times and it can divide 8 4 times now I take these two numbers 2 and 4 and I see if I can divide these well there's still a common number that can divide these two numbers so what I do is I divide them again and this time I get 2 divided by 2 which is 1 and 4 divided by 2 which is 2 now let me try to divide 1 and 2 by a common number is there a common number that can divide 1 and 2 well there isn't except 1 now since I've reached 1 I stop here so you keep dividing the two numbers until you cannot divide them anymore so then the GCF becomes the GCF of 4 and 8 becomes 2 times 2 times 1 all these numbers these three numbers 2 times 2 times 1 2 times 2 times 1 so 2 times 2 times 1 is equal to 4 so there you go that's the GCF of 4 and 8 it is 4 which is the same as this guy here 4 how about I show you one more example say I take a little bigger number say 180 and 240 and I want to find out the GCF of 180 and 240 so what I do is I keep dividing these two numbers by a common number until I cannot divide them anymore okay so I take 2 and I divide them by 2 so I get 90 and I get 120 now let me see if I can divide them further by 2 I can this time I get 45 and I get 60 now I cannot divide them by 2 anymore so what I do is I take 3 let me see if I can divide them by 3 I can 45 divided by 3 is 15 and 60 divided by 3 gives me 20 now let me see can I divide them by 3 anymore no I cannot so I take the next number 5 I do not take 4 because 4 is not a prime number I only take prime numbers and a prime number is a number that is only divisible by itself or by 1 okay so I take the next prime number after 3 which is 5 and I divide these two numbers again let me see what I get I get 3 and I get 4 now is there a common number other than 1 that can divide 3 and 4 there isn't so I stop here so the GCF of 180 and 240 is equal to all these numbers multiplied okay so 2 times 2 times 3 times 5 times 1 and that's equal to 2 times 2 is 4 4 times 3 is 12 12 times 5 is 60 so the GCF of 180 and 240 is 60 so if I take a fraction such as this 180 upon 240 then the simplified form of this will be 180 divided by 60 as well as 240 divided by 60 and that will give me let's see 3 upon 4 which is the same as actually the bottom the last one the last line 3 and 4 so there you go you get 3 upon 4 which is a simplified form of the fraction 180 upon 240 so that's the usefulness of finding GCF so you can simplify fractions all right that also brings us to the end of this lesson for practice exercises as usual visit www.homecampus.com.sg and don't forget to practice because practice makes perfect this is M signing off for now bye bye